We've been entering our deposit side of things. So we've got our information sorted first by the uh, detail and then by amount. So we can see our, our deposits up top and see them kind of grouped together. And so last time we've been thinking on the deposits, those are usually tied to, of course, deposits are uh, what we received from customers for work that we provided to them. So in other words, in our customer cycle or revenue cycle, at the end of the cycle, we would expect to be having a deposit typically into our checking accounts for goods and services provided. And in the easiest scenario, if we're getting paid from gig work, what we did and concentrated on last time, we might be able to just record income with the record deposit item as it comes through the bank feeds, constructing our books from the bank feeds. However, we might have some more difficult uh, components in that we might have a cash register situation, in which case we would probably need to use the sales receipt form and then make the deposit. We'll talk about that in the future. Or we might have uh, an invoice type of situation where we have to do an accrual component, entering the invoice, receive payment, then make the deposit. The other thing we need to be careful of is what if a deposit comes in that's not from the customer? That doesn't happen all the time, but there's a couple primary scenarios where it would happen. One would be the deposit came from us, the owner. So we needed to put money in in order to finance the business, often happening at the beginning of the business in order to finance the purchase of property, plants and equipment and inventory to get the business going or it could happen when we're basically building up the business, trying to step up the volume, buying more property, plants, and equipment, or fixed assets. Another way that the deposits might come in is if we took out a loan. If we take out a loan, then in order to finance for the same reasons, in order to finance the business, we might have a deposit that's not coming from customers. What we want to do in that scenario is be careful that we don't actually record the deposit as income. So in other words, if you have some kind of system set up where you're just saying all deposits that go into my checking account are income, then if you get a deposit that's from you or the bank, which is not income, and you don't differentiate it, you're gonna record it incorrectly. Now, the system that we've been looking at, we've been getting deposits from like platforms like YouTube or something like that, which it's clearly delineated in the bank feed data where the deposit is coming from and we can set up a rule that's going to be specific to who we got the money from but if you have a system set up for example that you're just getting cash and you're just depositing all the deposits that are cash just recording it as income for example and so you're just saying if anything is a deposit i'm just recording it as income that's the assumption then you got to make sure that if you put some other kind of deposit in there that you have some differentiating factor to pick up the other deposits from you or the bank and not record them as income.